So, can old school goalie equipment really teach you something new? I'll tell you three things I learned from playing in 90s goalie pads, coming up next. Voice over goalie. Hey, Wayne the voiceover goalie here. My channel is all about bringing you awesome goalie content, so if you've liked, subscribed, or commented on one of my videos, you are totally awesome. So if you've watched any of my recent videos, you might have seen me forego my set of Warrior G4 pads for an old school set of John Brown Excel pads. And in one of my recent videos, I talked about if pads really affect how you play the game. And while I had a lot of fun making that video, I got some really great feedback from you. Most of it was uh, along the lines of, you would have had a much better game if you played a more hybrid style in those pads instead of trying to play a modern butterfly style. And you know what, you're totally right. So I decided to do a follow-up video where I would actually try to play a legit old school style in old school equipment. Now before we get into it, I wanna know if you are still using a piece of equipment from more than 10 years ago. Something that was designed and manufactured pre-NHL Pro Spec era. If you've got an old trapper, mask, skates, or even a Curtis Curve goalie stick, let us all know in the comments below. So disclaimer, this video's footage is from the last game that I played in, which was back at the beginning of August uh, in the game that I sustained my injury in. If you want to hear more about that specifically, uh, click on this right here. And I thought it's time to go back and finish the video that I had started way back a couple months ago. So here are the three things that old school pads taught me about goaltending. Number one, goaltending is about reading and reacting. In today's modern butterfly game, we sometimes forget that being a goalie is about reading the play and reacting accordingly. A lot of today's game is about dropping and blocking and playing the percentages when it comes to taking up space. And while that can be successful in a lot of different scenarios, fundamentally, goaltending is about reading plays and reacting accordingly to make a save. So when wearing these older pads, this time around I was much more aware of not just dropping by default into a butterfly. Instead, I found myself doing a much better job of tracking the puck, both prior to the shot and after it's released off the stick. And that in turn made me much more reactive to second chances and rebounds. And that leads us to point number two. To be a goalie, you need to be athletic. One of the things we take for granted these days with goalie equipment is their technological advances. And that's primarily in a pad's design for function as well as weight savings. So it's easy to forget that to be a goalie, you need to be an athlete. And that's never more apparent than when you strap on 90s goalie pads. The only way to play the game in pads that weren't designed to butterfly slide is to make a save and then recover to your skates so that you can get in position for a second shot. And aside from all the physical requirements of having to do that with heavier equipment, it really boils down to having the strength and stamina to execute the moves that we have to do on a regular basis. You know, it might have been true back in the early days of hockey that the goalie was the least athletic person on the team because the perception was they weren't skating up and down the ice the entire game. And today you could still get away with that to some extent with the drop and block technique and equipment taking up a lot of space on an initial shot. But as the game gets faster and players get better, you can't just drop, let the shot hit you, and hope for the best. You really need to have that athleticism to recover and get ready for the next shot. And often that happens at least 30 times a night. Now, you know I've been guilty of being slide happy in older videos, because let's face it, that's the most efficient way to move, and I'm kind of an out of shape 40 year old guy. But when you strap on equipment that isn't conducive to that kind of efficiency of movement, or laziness, you really get a better appreciation of how athletic those guys from the 90s really were. You know, at a time where pads were super wide and twice as heavy. And that brings us to the third point, which is confidence. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. Wearing oversized pads really did make me feel invincible. I've been wearing Pro Spec 11 inch pads for, you know, I don't know how many years now. But then you put on pads that at their widest point are almost 14 inches wide. That's an additional six inches of coverage that you have across the neck. And I'll tell you what, having that feeling of being unbeatable really showed through, to the point where I knew I could make saves while standing up. Now confidence doesn't just come from your equipment, it has to come from every facet of your game. We all know that feeling of getting on the ice and forgetting to sharpen your skates and not feeling confident that you'll be able to move around the crease the way you normally do. 
Or if you're late to the rink and you didn't have time for your pregame meal, not feeling confident you'll have enough energy to last through the whole game. And when we're talking about confidence, we're really talking about mental strength and preparation. It's really all about doing the work before you even step on the ice. To build that confidence so you know when you get out there, you can then rely on your physical skills. You can name any goalie from the 90s and they just exemplify these three qualities. Dominic Kasich is arguably one of the best goalies that come out of that era. And if you look at his game, yeah, read react, athleticism, and he might've had the most confidence out of all those guys. So before you get on the ice for your next skate, think about how these three things impact your game personally. And you know what? I'm pretty sure you'll get out there and stop a few extra shots. For all of you that are new to the channel, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and liking and subscribing and commenting. Even though I'm currently not playing right now, I still have some really awesome goalie videos coming up this season. But if you're new to the channel, check out some of these videos over here to catch up. Oh, and one last thing. Go Bruins!